Hey guys, so doing this video with Fair Harbor GA4 setup because there's a lot of people who do not have this ready. Um, they're trying to get help with Fair Harbor and of course they're backdated because they've had a ton of clients to service. So I want to do this video to cover some of the important points about getting your Google Analytics 4 set up, what you have to do, if you want to connect it to Google Ads, what you have to do, um, and just a couple of scenarios you might run into. So first up, if you go into Google Analytics and well, right now it's May 8th, 2023, so we still have some time. Um, but if you have never created a GA4 property, you are going to see that. Actually, we already have one. We still see this. But chances are you're going to see this if you go to your regular Google Analytics. So what you want to do is either go to Setup Assistant. If you see this kind of a prompt, you might see a prompt up here in the top right corner. And if you don't, you can just click down here, like not where I'm at, but click on the Admin section uh, like so. I'm just going to say no thanks. Admin section. And then you're going to see under uh, the middle section property, GA4 Setup Assistant, which is basically what it, it was trying to prompt you to do before anyway. Um, we already have one, but you just want to go to, um, it'll be like set up or create a GA4 property. And that's basically what you're going to do. It wants you to import any of your tracking. You just go ahead and import that stuff. I can't do it because this account already has one, um, but I'm going to show you what to do after you have one. So let's just say you went to this little wizard, you created your setup. Next thing you want to do is kind of mess around with the settings for the new property. So what you want to do is under your um, under your account, I can't really show it to you on camera. Uh, you're just going to basically click on your name of your company, and then underneath all website data, you should see um, your GA4 property. So hopefully all this will be blurred out <laughs> for my tech team or my video team. And I'm just going to click on that GA4 property. So. Once you're inside the property, now this one has not been integrated with the Fair Harbor dashboard. We're going to do that. It was just created. We're just collecting data um, for a little while now. So I'm a little bit behind on this one. This is our tour company, our rental company. So I'm going to go ahead and just click on the admin settings at the bottom left here. And then I've done some of these settings already, but I'll just show you what we did. So what you're going to do is basically go to a couple places. One, property settings. Um, Make sure your time zone is reflected properly here. And then we're gonna click on um, data settings, data collection. And then you're gonna make sure this little guy is turned on. Google Signals Collections is basically going to help uh, when pixels go away. If you're not sure what that means, it just means when tracking changes, this is gonna help Google optimize a little bit better. I mean, it's not exactly, it's not like the definition you get in a dictionary, but think of it that way. And then also data retention. Um, you'll want to use like the max here, which is basically how long are they going to keep data in your account? So we're going with the maximum. Um, what else? What else? What else? I want to mention here. Attribution settings should be fine. Um, we did the max um, acquisition, uh, the max dates, but that's already the default. So I think that might have changed recently. And linking to Google Ads, we'll talk a little about that uh, in a minute. But you could link to a Google Ads account right here. Basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is, it won't say this, it'll just say link. You're gonna click on link and you're going to basically, um, it's gonna show you the Google Ads accounts that you have uh, linked up with your email. If you're doing this, you're not logging in to the same email that has your Google Ads account, you might not see it, so you're gonna to have to make sure you are or make yourself a user with the email that has access to uh, analytics. You're gonna also have to be an admin of both Google Ads and Google Analytics for the two things to link. Okay, that's a big, pain in the butt thing that it makes it, you're wondering why you can't connect it and sometimes you can't figure that out. You have to be an admin for both. Okie dokie. So we'll move out of here and then we'll go to, uh, I'll just click out and click back again and we'll look at data streams. So data streams is basically kind of like what um, properties used to be for the old analytics. Like there was three levels. Now there's two. Did I say property? I'm going to say view. Sorry. The third one was view. Data streams is kind of like the view. So right now I'm going to this data stream, which is our website or the one we have, and you're gonna see this measurement ID. You're gonna to wanna to copy this measurement ID. This is what you have to give to Fair Harbor or plug into your uh, Fair Harbor dashboard, which we'll show you in a minute. But before we do that, let's just take a look at some, some of the settings you wanna adjust here. So um, a couple of things. For manage uh, connected tags, we've got our connected tag to our regular Google Analytics. 
Um, you may or may not have connected the two when you created your new property. You may not have even had another property before being a regular universal analytics. If you do, you want to connect them just so the data can carry over. Um, hopefully that gets blurred out too, as far as my editing team configures when they're doing the, uh, the blurring out of things. Then we want to go to configure uh, tag settings. And you're gonna see this little option to show all. So we wanna do that. So a couple of things are number one, for configure your uh, domains, you wanna make sure if you have secondary websites that you also wanna track. Some of you guys have multiple websites um, and you want all the data to be together in one property because you've only got one Fair Harbor, but you're maybe buying multiple domains, then add those other websites here as a condition. Now, if you don't have multiple websites or you still wanna see those multiple websites separately, in their own analytics account, then don't do that, okay? So if you don't know what that means, you have one website, just skip what everything I just said. Um, the other thing is list unwanted referrals. This is really important, Fair Harbor tells you this, but you want to add fairharbor.com as a referral exclusion. That just means that when somebody goes to one of their embed widgets and they book, um, a lot of times, and this will still happen to a degree, Fair Harbor, it looks like Fair Harbor was the source of that traffic. Well, they're not. They're, they're your booking embed on the website, but because of the way they do things, um, you can send traffic from organic, from email, from SEO, from PPC, whatever, and sometimes it shows up as it came from Fair Harbor. So when we exclude Fair Harbor as being a referral, then Google Analytics will attribute that traffic back to the source before it got to Fair Harbor. So if somebody went from an ad to, the fair, to your website, which had the Fair Harbor uh, booking widget, they open up the widget they book, sometimes it might show Fair Harbor. Well, it'll skip that and just show the previous, you know, an ad. It'll show Google Ads or whatever as the source referrals. We also add our own domain there just in case there's some weird stuff with subdomains or different versions of domains that are sending traffic, redirects, things like that. So it's good to have both of these things in there as exclusions, and that way you're not counting yourself or Fair Harbor as a referral exclusion. Another thing that could be helpful, not so much applicable for Fair Harbor, but if you've got like, you take PayPal as the payment method or whatever, um, you could add paypal.com as exclusion or anything like that. So anything where you feel like it's not the source of an actual transaction or shouldn't get credit as like a referral because it's just like a redirect from your website to a payment gateway and back or something like that, you just probably want to add that here, okay? That was total nerd, nerd stuff right there. Um, give me one second here. Okay, so one other thing, it's very optional. If you know your IP address and you don't want to count yourself as being like a visitor, you could put your IP address right here and then it would basically exclude you from being part of the data that it's aggregating. So let's just say you're on your website all the time, you spend a lot of time there, you visit a whole bunch of pages and you do it often, you don't want to be counted as a user and skew all your numbers. So you can add your IP address here or the range of IP addresses, whatever you have. There's some other options here for like, if you've got a range of IP addresses. Again, total nerd stuff. If you don't if you don't know what we're talking about, probably you can just ignore it. Okay, so we've configured most of what we need to do on our side from the GA4 side. Now again, you may wanna come back and make sure things look good after Fair Harbor um, has this in your dashboard, but you still need to add the new tracking code to the website. So if you're using, so first of all, Fair Harbor manages your website, just tell me to add to your website. You're gonna to have to give them this measurement ID, so we'll just copy this for right now. And then we'll show you what an email might look like um, to send them this information to add to your dashboard. And you can just add, hey, by the way, add it to my website too. If you have to do it yourself, or you have a website person or agency or whatever, they should know how to do this, okay? If you have to do it yourself, you could use Google Tag Manager if you're already doing it. Um, we won't get into that too much in this video. Um, otherwise, you can just add some code to your existing Google Tag. If you look down here at the very bottom of this page, it says view tag instructions. And so you can see like, if you're gonna install it manually, this is the tag and it would go in the head section of your website. So that's all you really need to do. If you're using tag manager, you can click here to learn more. So hopefully if you're not, you're not on your own, um, if you are, kind of sucks, but that's what it is. Um, if you're using like a GoDaddy website, yeah, they can give you a space for analytics. I think they have a GA4 integration now. Um, if, they, if they don't yet, that means kind of sucks because uh, you can't really add a lot of code to the GoDaddy website. So hopefully that's not you. All right, and then once we have that installed or we have you know your webmaster doing it or I just showed you how to get the instructions, add the tag to 
whatever your website is, or email Fair Harbor. Then what we have to do is we need to either add the um, tracking measurement ID that's right here to the dashboard yourself or email Fair Harbor. So let's just say you have to email Fair Harbor because you, well, let's just start with trying to do it yourself and let me uh, show you what that would look like. So you're gonna log into Fair Harbor, which I am here. I'm just in my settings options. I'm gonna go to analytics and tracking right here. I'm gonna add a new analytics service, GA4. The SKU, they just tell you to use your you know, short name or whatever. So I'm just gonna use ours. Okay, and then this is where I paste that ID. And there's this little option right here. And if you have your booking dashboard or your embeds or whatever for Fair Harbor on multiple websites like affiliates or whatever, you might want to check this, you know, or sorry, you might not want to check this. Um, you probably wouldn't want to check this if you, let's just say leave it alone, I guess, by default, and then talk to them if you think you need to add it. it basically has to do with sending data from other websites that are not the same ones as analytics property um, to analytics. So again, probably just leave it alone. Hit create analytics service like so, and we got it. So now this should be added to our dashboard. Now, if you don't see that option for whatever reason, you just email Fair Harbor. Hey, FH support team or Fair Harbor, whatever. Can you please implement our J4 property into the dashboard, please? Again, if they manage your website, you could also say, and also integrate it, it on our website, right? Something to that effect. I don't have to type this out for you guys are smart people, but you want to include that property ID. So, you know, paste that in there. And then I would just tell them, you know, once this is completed, because you'll want to confirm they did it and they did it correctly. How would you know they did it and they did it correctly? Because when you go back to your analytics setup here and you go to your, uh, you go to your, let's just say homepage, and assuming you have bookings that have happened online, you'll be able to get an idea and go to reports. Okay, and you would see like total revenue is more than zero. First of all, you'll see users and stuff. This means it's on the website. So we just installed ours now. So we have zero revenue being reported or tracked. We just have traffic data. So there's two things you wanna make sure of. If number one, it's integrated correctly on your website, you should start seeing users and things like that. If it's uh, implemented correctly in Fair Harbor, you should start seeing revenue, assuming that you've gotten online bookings in the recent past, okay? so. This will take some time to do. So if you get installed right now, like I just did, I'm not gonna see data till probably tomorrow, okay? It might be data from today, but analytics has their own kind of lag time. So I wouldn't be looking between now and tomorrow to know if we've gotten you know, bookings that have happened and revenue reported here. Again, if we get a booking, the first booking we get from this point forward is tomorrow morning, then I'm gonna wait you know, to the end of that day or 24 hours from that point. So you wanna wait till it's around, you know, up to 24 hours after the booking happened when the tag has been installed. So kind of weird there. The point is don't assume that it works just because you asked Fair Harbor to implement it. No offense, Fair Harbor, but nobody's perfect and better to be safe than sorry. So hope this has been helpful. Um, a little bit of a walkthrough on how to do it. Oh, and actually one last thing. This is last part is if you're using Google ads, I will show you how to import the transactions if you're running ads. Okie dokie, so we are inside the Google Ads account. You should not be able to see our stuff up here. <laughs> Hopefully my video team did, right, did a great job. Um, not that there's anything crazy here, ads or pause right now anyway. But what you're gonna do is log into your Google Ads account. You're gonna click on Tools and Settings. You're gonna go, well, first of all, if you didn't do the linking of your Google Ads account to your Analytics account in the previous step that I showed you, what you're gonna do is go to Linked Accounts right here. And then once you get to linked accounts, so you give you the option for a GA4 uh, Firebase thing, and you just manage and link. So you click there, it'll ask you which one, you'll follow the prompts to link it together again. You have to be an admin of both Google Ads and Analytics, and you have to be logged into that, that account that has both to do this, okay? Or you have to be able to log into it, okay? So once that's done, then we just go to tools and settings, conversions, this part's the easiest part of the whole video and we're going to click new conversion action, okay? Now, if you, have, if you were already doing this with the previous Google Analytics 
um, tracking, let's say you were tracking your conversions, tracking your transactions and your bookings in Google Ads. Um, I'll show you how to make sure you don't double count in just a minute, but just be aware that you don't wanna have them both sending data in because they might still both work for a while and you don't want that to happen. Okay, so click on import. You're gonna choose this first option. You're gonna choose web and you're gonna choose continue. And now because it is um, completed and we have our accounts linked, you can see there's this purchase event. Now, if I didn't add this to Fair Harbor and I didn't add this to, um, uh, and I didn't link the two uh, Google Ads and Analytics, I probably wouldn't see anything here, okay? So just letting you know. So I'm gonna uh, click on purchase and import and continue. And then from there, we got some settings we'll take a look at. Well, after we say done, we'll go back to that new transaction. So you can see right here, this is the old one. It's called transactions. This is the new one. Okay. So see where it says primary and secondary. If this is now we're getting to Google Ads nerd stuff, but this just means that this is the main thing Google is looking at. It's one of the main things to optimize for. There could be other things. You see this one's another one. These are other ones, but it just means that they're using this number and they're showing you revenue. Because it says secondary, Google can see it, they will report it, but it's not gonna show up in your conversion value columns in Google Ads. So if, it's, if they both said primary, they would both show up. Meaning if we had revenue here, plus revenue here, they'd be both counted. Let's say we made a thousand bucks and it's the same thousand bucks, it's the same bookings. They're being counted twice. You're gonna show $2,000 in revenue when you only made a thousand. So what you wanna do is, once you check to make sure Google Analytics a GA4 is working and that revenue number is coming in, I would come in here and look and see if there's any conversion value. That means you got bookings uh, with revenue from your Google Ads campaigns. And once you start seeing that that number looks accurate to you, then you can just go in here and switch this from secondary. I'm just clicking on it, clicking on the name, hit edit. I would change this to primary right here. I'm not gonna do that right yet. Um, actually, I will do it because I know that we're gonna be fine. Okay, hit done. And then I would do the inverse for the old transaction or the old uh, the old conversion right here. Transactions, I would change this one from being primary to being secondary. And you might ask, why wouldn't you just remove it? Why? Because this is a great fallback point to make sure you're comparing things. Now, it usually, it will be for the first, as long as they're reporting, right, until uh, July 1st. But if I need to like compare the two, I can compare the two just to make sure for the next month and a half while we have both, like the numbers seem to line up a bit, okay? That's the only reason why. Eventually it will be worthless because it won't even report data anymore. But for right now, that's what we'll do. Um, if you're watching this after July 1st, you don't have to worry about this part. This should just be your primary uh, primary action because you won't have anything else in, GA, uh, in analytics to, to use anymore. So this is really only a process you would, you would use up until uh, July 1st, 2023. So anyway, hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.